So how do you reduce friction and movement with the goal of getting to better fuel economy and lower emissions? Pouring a barrel of oil. <laughs> Pretty much, right? <laughs> that's not where I was going, but yeah, it's, it's, it's the same result. So that's, that's really where the wet. The wet belt is actually designed, despite uh, our better judgment and thinking it's just did to annoy us, the wet belt was designed to reduce friction with the goal of reducing emissions. Yep. So, I mean, that's one of its big benefits is, yeah, that inherent friction reduction, more fuel economy, arguably a quite quieter as well, but you're not get, you're getting less friction in that kind of interface of the belt and the teeth, yep. and that can then carry over to fuel economy, which the OEMs want um, for their fuel economy targets or CO2 emissions. However, we know that in the industry, they've got a bit of a bad reputation. Um, obviously, they de seem to degrade. Now, I don't really understand the real reason why it's happening, because when we do all the testing, it's tested with the materials that the belt is made of. You know, there's a lot of plastics and rubbers in an engine today. Um, the sealants, the ch chain tensioners, for example. Um, for whatever reason, there seems to be an issue with, with them falling apart or pieces coming off some of the fuels maybe you know ethanol how's the ethanol mix changed over the years so that we're getting more of these kind of more aggressive fuel getting into the oil attacking the wet bell but you know some of the OEMs have moved back so they've gone back to a chain now so whether that's kind of that may be giving us the answer as to, to what they really think but yeah they've really pushed fuel economy but maybe this is an example of Maybe that if it's been pushed too hard, but I don't see there's any real technical reason why it's happened other than it seems to be happening. 